Hi guys, welcome to Wine TV. I'm Dave, and today I'm at Witches Falls Winery in Tambourine Mountain. It's on the Gold Coast in Queensland. They're a nice small boutique winery. A lot of their fruit is sourced from the Granite Belt up in Queensland. We're going to go inside, have a look, and they're right in the middle of the vintage, so it could be a little bit interesting. Only have one aim. Gonna sink my teeth into your skin, baby. What's your name? Well, can we talk about it? What's your name? Well, don't tell me someone else has not a what's your name. Just so I know who I'm taking on. Yeah. So what we're seeing here today is Cabernet grapes. Now, not all grapes are machine picked or hand picked, but these um, Cabernet grapes have actually been machine picked and they're being put into the crusher, ready to have the stems taken off and to have the juices pumped into open fermentation tanks. So that's where you can see the tube going through into those four green boxes and the stems are coming off um, from the machine. What's your name? Well, don't tell me someone else is not a what's your name? Just so I know who I'm taking on. What's your name? Well, don't tell me someone else says, no, no, what's your name? Just so I know who I'm taking on. Alright guys, hey, we're uh, here at Witches Falls and I'm with John Heslop, the owner and uh, chief winemaker for Witches Falls Winery here on Mount Tambourine Mountain on the Gold Coast in Queensland. And uh, he's just got a couple of wines here that he's going to show us that are, some of them are a bit interesting, something a little bit different. And, uh, you know, if you haven't sort of gotten into some Granite Belt Queensland wine, you definitely should because, you know, there's some really great stuff out there. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, no, I was going to actually, I was going to say, not only Granite Belt, for example, I mean, one of the wines I haven't got here is our Fiano, and um, unfortunately we've sold out of it, but that's only grown five kilometres. Oh, right. Um, sort of okay. west of here, it's sort of um, in between here and, and, and Bedezza. So, right. you know, I think um, there's different varieties that grow really well in different areas, and as an industry, I think we're getting more towards that stage where we can start to experiment with different varieties that might be better grown in you know that's certain right areas. Yeah. so not only here but elsewhere in australia you know as it is so yep. um the wines we've got to um have a look at here today you know we've chosen just because we do something a little bit different with them i think you know mm -hmm. and so they're a little bit interesting and so the first one we've got here is our co-inoculated vidello and vidello it's a it's a variety that's big in some areas in australia um Obviously in WA, in the Hunter, and in Queensland. I think there's a bit of McLaren Vale as well. Yeah, but, yep, um, yep. And but w what we've done with it, about four, well, five or six years ago, there was a study that came out by the Australian Wine Research Institute where they um, used different yeasts, two different yeasts in combination, and um, one of um, or two of them was what one's Q QA23, which is a French isolate, I understand, another mm -hmm. one called Vin Seven, which is a South African. They, they did it with Sauvignon Blanc, but what they found is that when these two yeasts were used in combination, they had a spike in the types of characteristics that they thought were favourable for, for you know, that kind of wine. So yeah. we started experimenting with our Vidello. Yeah, same thing about four years ago. And um, In fact, I spoke to um, Saki Pretorius at the AWRI, and he was excited that we'd even... I mean, we've, we've referenced them on the bottle, and he was excited that we'd do that and, and all the rest of it. But... I think it's something that we've got positive results with. Absolutely. Using, using two different uh, two different uses in this way. So, Verdello is a fantastic variety, anyway, guys, and it's like it's one of those lesser known varieties that 
that is a good sort of substitute for Sauvignon Blanc or if you're particularly in that sort of like that style of wine something yeah, different to try it's really fruity quick I mean I think Queensland grows it very very well it um, look it's one that you know has an probably a little bit like Sauvignon Blanc when it's picked a bit greener it can be you know have some more of those green flavours and right through to you know a bit more tropical when it's you know when it's a lot riper and, that's um, fantastic that's um really luscious too and it is luscious it fills um, your palate completely it's fantastic yeah. and the acid's really nice and tight and you kind of want to keep coming back for more which is look, most of our look it's a style that with most of our whites we like to have strong acid in in there that's just what we like mm -hmm. so most of them tend to be you know that, that way where we've got really good acid but um, I can see that going quite well with uh, some freshly shucked oysters or something like that you know, yeah, very well oysters, you know, yeah yeah no Excellent. So look, and it's one that we've we've extended. We do it with our Sauvignon Blanc now as well. Mm -hmm. um, um, last year we had an unwooded Chardonnay. Unfortunately, we didn't have the quantity of fruit and Chardonnay to do it this year. But mm -hmm. um, next year, there's always another year. Yep, yep you know, absolutely. The fruit grows every year. So the next wine we'll have a look at is our um, this is our 2011 Wild Ferment Pinot. Okay. And um, we've been doing a Pinot every year. We did one in 04, 05, 06, 07. We didn't do one in 08. Um, 9, 10, and 11. 9, I think, was our best. Mm -hmm. This one, the 11, is pretty close behind. Right. And, um, in fact, um, Tony Harper, he's a uh, prominent wine writer in Brisbane, he, um, he uh, in fact, he, he wrote an article saying that he thought our 9, Pinot, at that time, was the, the, the best Pinot that he'd ever seen from Queensland by some distance. Wow. And, um, you know, he said that he publicly stated that Pinot could never be grown up here, and, and uh, he said he had to Wow. Head to, um, well, I guess too, as we were saying about cooler climate, you know, I guess some people don't realise that it, it can get quite cool. Oh, well, look, it can get, belt, it can get really cool. And that's... It can get um, really cool, you know. And, look, the other thing is, uh, I mean, it's, it's another wine where, look, we, we obviously, you know, co-inoculated wild ferments. We really like to experiment and we're in a fortunate position where we can. We de-stemmed all of it just into open fermenters. And then it got plunged maybe three times in sort of nine or ten right, days. And you still got that, that colour through it. Still got the colour, you know. Yeah. And, and, and at that time, there's no um, added, ye you know, no yeast because it's a wild ferment. Um, 2009, we didn't even, we didn't add any acid. We didn't, we added sulphur at, um, at, at that um, fruit stage you know, mm. when we de-stemmed it. And that was it. And um, we then pressed it off into barrels, about a th all French egg, about a, new, a third new. And um, we um, actually we pressed it off into a tank and then and let the gross leaves settle out, then into barrels. Yep. And um, we then we, when it's gone through Malo, we just top the barrels and sulphur them, top them, and then yep. get them out once a month. So we in fact this wine, these wines, we let sit on Malo leaves for the whole time as well. Okay. And um, you know that was something that I'd never done before. And so when all I all the way through it, the whole way through. Yeah, yeah right. Ten months it'll spend in, in barrels and. You know the guys over in France, and I said to them, "So, what, you know, why do you do that?" And they went, "Oh, we just think it's it's, it's good for it." Yeah, right. Okay. There you go. <laughs> well, there you go. That's, and I remember that's going, very French. It is, you <laughs> know. And I remember going to a couple of seminars here when I got back, and, and prominent winemakers being on stage and asking them about it, and they sort of ridiculed me a bit and said, "What, you know, why would you do that?" Yeah. Okay, that's all right. But you know, there's a because uh, you think it's good. Oh, there's a million and one ways to do things winemaking, yeah. you know, wise, and um, you know. I think we're getting great results. I mean, so, I, I wouldn't sort of certainly not pick that as a with, with limited knowledge of Queensland Pinot, but sort of as a as a Queensland Pinot. Look, we know, don't like, want the wines to be regarded as you know Queensland or not Queensland, which is we, what we, I think is, right, is great we, about the wine. Is right. it's, it stands up. I think we, with that's right. We want them to be. We want them to stand up against any other wine, any other winery, any by anybody. They can taste it, and they, and they think it's a terrific wine in its own right. You know what I mean? So, yeah. first thing is the nose. It's like it's really full of. I kind of get a jammy thing on there, but right. like in a, there's there's lots of savory and and really huge depth to it. Yeah. And it's got lots of character. It's sort of not like a, it's not light and fluffy and you know there's lots of fruit but lots of earthiness and there is some funk good in there, which is yeah. kind of cool. Which I like in Pinot to have a bit of funk in there. Look, you know? I think we're look. I I mean. I think it's something we we're we're getting pretty good at, and um, you've I've shown you our twelves in barrel. Yeah, and, and we've got two different batches, and they they both look just outstanding. Yeah. And 
one will go to our wild ferment range and, and one will go, at this stage, we'll go to our prophecy range, we'll have a prophecy peanut and we'll talk about our prophecy wines in a sec. But, you know, look, I think it's, 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 a, it's a variety we all love. It's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's one that doesn't behave the way you want it to always. Yeah, well, it's you know, not you, easy, that's for sure. You think you've got it under control, but you, you don't, yeah. you know what I mean? That kind of thing. So, um, well, that's I'm, brilliant. I'm pretty happy with where we're heading with our Pinots. And, Absolutely. Yeah. Full of gas, stereos cranked, caliber back, and I did that. Said I dig that. Got my eyes on the road, the wind's in my hair. 